In this video, we're going to cover PC Engine, TurboGrafx-16, SuperGrafx, and TurboGrafx-16 CD, PC Engine CD emulation on the PC version of RetroArch. Alright, the time has come to cover the PC Engine and TurboGrafx-16. These aren't systems that I have a ton of nostalgia for, as I didn't have one growing up, but I've grown quite fond of it in recent years, having dived into its library. That being said, emulation for the system is pretty top-notch and relatively easy to get set up. So let's go ahead and dive in. So to get started with PC Engine TurboGrafx-16 emulation, you need to install the PC version of RetroArch. So guides will be linked in the description below if you have not gotten it set up already. So follow along with these guides, get RetroArch installed and set up and configured, then come back and follow along with this guide so you don't have any issues. Now first up, let's talk about BIOS files. You only need them if you plan on using TurboGrafx-16 CD or PC Engine CD games. Now there are a number of different system cards that the PC Engine and TurboGrafx-16 had to run CD games, and they are all listed here in the RetroArch documents, but it is recommended to use SysCard 3, which is the last one that was released and is compatible with both regions and should have the most compatibility with your games. So, you can get an actual system card 3, dump it with a hardware dumper, or, you know, resort to Google to find one. Don't really care which way you go about doing it, but as always, no illegal download links will be provided on this channel. But once you have your system card sourced, it just needs to be named accordingly, so I have a system card 3, so it's syscard3.pce. We just need to add this to our RetroArch system folder. So, open up your RetroArch folder wherever you installed it, find your system folder, and then drag the BIOS file right inside, and that is good to go for your CD-based games. Next, you just need to source games, and there's a variety of ways to do this. If you bought any of the TurboGrafx Virtual Console games, you can rip those from a modded Wii. If you have physical games, you can rip them with something like the Retro Stage Retro Blaster. And then for CD-based games, you can actually dump these using the PC version of RetroArch. So over on the channel, I have the guide on how to do the CD dumping here, so if you're interested, this will be in that same playlist as the install guides. Or again, resort to Google to find them. I really, again, don't care. Just don't ask for illegal download links as they will not be provided. But once you have your games sourced, you just need to put them anywhere on your hard drive. Doesn't matter where they go. Just find somewhere for them to be. So I'm just going to add them to my RetroArch demo folder here under the games folder. So there we go. And once you have your BIOS and game files placed, just open up RetroArch and we will begin downloading our core to play them. So just open up RetroArch here. Once RetroArch is loaded, head down to the online updater. Core downloader and then press the right arrow on your keyboard or right on a D-pad on a controller to scroll down to Neck. And we are going to be downloading the PC Engine Super Graphics Beetle Super Graphics Core. And once that core has finished downloading, you can go ahead and back out to the main menu and begin loading up your content. So one method of doing so is to head to load content, navigate to the directory where your games are stored, Select a game, and it should automatically boot up. And there you go, PC Engine games running on the PC version of RetroArch. Now, I'm not too personally fond of that method, so what I like to do instead is use the RetroArch desktop menu to make games playlists. So, you can access the desktop menu by clicking on Show Desktop Menu or pressing F5 on your keyboard to activate it. And once the desktop menu has finished loading, you can right-click over here in the Content Browser, New Playlist, type in Neck, space dash space and we're gonna start with our PC Engine TurboGrafx-16 library here real quick so type in PC Engine space dash space TurboGrafx-16 and then press enter for OK and you'll be greeted with a new PC Engine TurboGrafx-16 playlist entry so just select that and now in the white space here, just right click, add folder, and navigate to where you have your PC Engine and TurboGrafx-16 games. So let's see here, TG16 PC Engine game, select folder. Now for the core, choose Beetle Super Graphics, and database, choose NEC PC Engine slash TurboGrafx-16. And then press OK, and all of your games should appear in that new playlist. Now, if you want to pretty up the playlist a bit, you can just right click on the playlist entry and tell it to download all thumbnails for this playlist. And as long as your games are named correctly, it should find the box arts for all of your games. But now we can just go ahead and do the same thing for our other um, playlists that we're going to be using for this emulator. So, Super Graphics, Neck, 
all caps, space dash space, PC Engine Super Graphics. No double E's. Whoops. There we go. And then you press enter there and you'll get a new Super Graphics playlist entry. And then same thing, just add in the games folder for your Super Graphics games. So there we go. Select folder. Core, Beetle Super Graphics, Database, PC Engine Super Graphics. Okay, there we go. And then same deal, you can download all the playlist thumbnails if desired. If it's not named correctly, chances are it might not find them, so it probably doesn't like that this one's labeled as Super Graphics Enhanced. There we go. All right, well, I wasn't able to find a thumbnail for that one, period, so that's fine. So what you could do in cases like this where it doesn't find box art, you could head over to a site like GameFAQs, search up the game in question, head to the media section, boxes, and you should be able to find a box art for the game in question. So here we go. Save that to my desktop. Move RetroArch out of our way real quick so we can see it here. So there's the box art, it's in JPEG format. So we just need to get this converted over to PNG for it to work with the desktop menu. So opening up paint, drag the box art in, and then just save it as a PNG picture. And there we go, now we can use that in the desktop menu. So make sure the game you wanna add the box art to is selected, then drag the PNG format picture into the box art section here and it applies it to the game. So there we go. And our last playlist was going to be for PC Engine CD. So just right click again, new playlist, neck, space dash space, PC Engine CD, space dash space, turbo graphics, dash CD. And there we go. Now we have a PC Engine CD TurboGrafx-16 CD playlist entry here. And now same thing again, add folder, navigate to your CD games, select the folder for the core. Once again, Beetle Super Graphics, Database, NEC, PC Engine CD, TurboGrafx CD. And this is where things are going to be a bit more interesting. So you can use TurboGrafx CD games, PC Engine CD games in CHUD format or leave them in bin Q format. If you have left them in bin Q format like I have for this example, you will want to type in the Q extension here in the extension tab so it doesn't populate your playlist entry with all the bin files that are associated with that game. If you have them in CHUD format, you don't really need to worry about that. There'll be a single file anyway, but for bin Q, this will be very useful for you. And there we go, I found my Castlevania Rondo of Blood. Now one nice thing about the RetroArch desktop menu is it does let you know if your BIOS files are being detected properly. So as you can see here on the right, it's saying it can find my SysCard 3 just fine, but it's not finding the other ones because I don't have them. So you can use that as a troubleshooting method to see if RetroArch is seeing your BIOS files. And then if you want to add box art to your CD games, you could do so as well. I'm not going to worry about it here in this demo. So once you're done making your playlist, just go ahead and close out of the desktop menu. Press F on RetroArch to make it full screen. And to get all of your new playlists to show up on the left, just click on Restart RetroArch. And now we have new PC Engine Turbo Graphics playlist entries here on the left. And complete with box arts over on the right if you added them. But then to play a game, all you need to do is select it and tell it to run. And there we go, PC Engine and TurboGrafx-16 games running on the PC version of RetroArch through our playlist. But before we dive into some gameplay demos here, I want to touch on controls real quick. So that's one of the reasons why I loaded up Street Fighter 2 here. So the PC Engine had two different types of controllers. You had the two button controller and then the six button controller. And it is very easy to swap between them. All you need to do is press L2 or left trigger on your controller to swap between the two button and six button controller at will. So as you can see here in Street Fighter 2, we could go from a two button pad to a six button pad, thus making the game a lot more playable. And then you could just configure controls from here on out as you see fit. But there we go, Street Fighter 2 completely playable as on any other system that had proper uh, full button pads versus a two button pad of nonsense. But this being emulation, there are a number of things that we could configure within the PC, um, well, Super Graphics Core here. So if we press F1 on our keyboard or a guide button on a controller, we could access the RetroArch Quick Menu. And then from here, scroll down to Core Options. So our first set of options are in the Video tab, and we could choose our color palette between RGB and Composite. 
RGB will give you better color, so definitely preferred. Next up, aspect ratio, so you can choose between 4x3 or 6x5, or leave it on auto for the game to decide. Next we have horizontal overscan, so this is only for the 352 width mode games, so you can mess with this on games that can actually utilize it. I'm not too familiar with 352 width mode games, so I will leave this to your discretion when it comes to your own games. And then we have initial scan line and last scan line, so again, these are ones that most users could just leave at default, but if you really want to fine tune something, you can mess with it here. Next up, input. First up, mouse sensitivity, so if you have selected a mouse in one of your controller options, which we will touch on in a little bit, you can set the mouse sensitivity here. Next up, allow opposing directions, uh, not an option most end users need, but you can enable it or disable it here. Our next option, disable soft reset, so the start and back button on your controller are going to soft reset the PC engine, this is a system feature, so if you want to disable that option, you can do so here, that way you don't accidentally reset your game. Next up, five player multi-tap, so this is on by default, you can just leave it here, that way you can use five controllers for your emulation. Next, turbo hotkey mode, so the PC Engine controller was interesting that it actually had turbo button functionality built into it. And so there's a couple of different options, you can use toggle or dedicated. So for ease of use, toggle will probably be recommended because then you can use it with the alternate turbo hotkey buttons. So if you plan on using the six button controller, if you have your turbo hotkey set to dedicated, you're going to have to remap buttons 3 and 4. But if you turn on alternate turbo hotkeys, your thumbstick click-ins will become your turbo buttons for those controls, thus you don't need to change any of your mappings. And our final option is turbo delay, so you can set how quick your turbo speed is here. Backing out, next up, CD. So the first option, CD image cache, this will make it so your entire CD image is loaded into RAM before starting. It will cause a slower startup time, but should minimize load times once the game has started. Next, you could choose your CD BIOS, so if you have multiple system cards put into your BIOS folder, you could select them here. I only have system card 3. The Tech Games Express CD, that's on by default, just leave it there. Next, you could set the CD-ROM loading speed between a 1x drive up to an 8x drive will reduce load times but can cause some issues, so do be aware of that. And then finally, you can manually set the volume for different sound channels in the CD emulation. And our last set of options are in the emulation hacks. So first up, for Super Graphics Emulation, this is going to be very useful for certain homebrew games. There are also some Super Graphics games that won't trigger Super Graphics mode, so you can manually turn it on here if needed but it is recommended to leave it off unless absolutely needed. Next up, no sprite limit. So, like most consoles of the time, if there were too many sprites on a certain scan line, you would encounter flickering. So if you want to remove the flickering, you could turn this option on. And our final option is to overclock our emulated CPU. So you can crank this up and basically make this system go blazing fast but it can cause issues in certain titles, so do be aware of that. But if you have a game that suffers from slowdown due to the hardware, you can overclock the system and mitigate that slowdown. And as always, if there are certain core options you want to have set for some games but not others, you can head up to Manage Core Options and save them as a Game Options file, so that way, every time you load up a game, that is the options that will just be for that one game and not your entire PC Engine, PC Engine CD, or Super Graphics games. But let's touch on controls here real quick. So if you go into the controls tab, port one controls or port two, port three, etc., you'll see the device type. And so there are a couple of options. There's the PC Engine joypad and a mouse. So for your two button, six button pad, it'll be on joypad. And then you can change it over to a mouse if you're doing stuff that can support mouse controls. And then same thing with port two, port three, port four, and port five. Now one last thing I want to cover here real quick before we call this video good is the use of shaders. So RetroArch has quite an extensive shader library, so you can enable it in this tab if they aren't already. Make sure you've downloaded them from the online updater, and then you can click on load and begin going through them and choosing whichever ones that you enjoy. So for me, I really like using CRT Easy Mode, it just provides a nice look, looks good on native resolution content and up res content, and doesn't require a lot of configuration. So. Personal preference on shaders, they are all going to be just whatever you prefer. But just a quick demo of uh, CRT Easy Mode here. Looks like this when you actually get into gameplay. 
But once you find a shader that you enjoy, just head back into the shader tab, click on the save button, and then you can save it as a core preset so that way every time you load up a game in the core, that shader will greet you. And that's going to do it for PC Engine, TurboGrafx-16, SuperGrafx, and CD emulation in the PC version of RetroArch. Again, fairly straightforward to get it set up, easy to use, and gives you a nice set of options that you can use to enhance the experience. But as always, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you have found it informative, and it helps you get your emulation projects up and running to your liking. But here at the end, I do have a couple of huge favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's tutorial, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Always loads of content coming your way, and I'd love to have all of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keeping it going, you can check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing this content to all of you. Big shout out to all of our current backers. Thank you so much for believing what we do here and helping us keep it going. You are the truest of champs. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.